awesome. Hello and welcome to the live stream. Today I'm playing Turing Complete, the probably the ultimate computer science game, at least out there so far. <clears throat> I made one video on it, which you should definitely watch if you haven't already, because it introduces the concepts explored in this video. This is a game about taking basic logic gates and using them to incrementally build larger and larger things, eventually culminating in a full computer, which is absolutely nuts. So if you ever want to learn how a computer works, this is an awesome educational logic puzzle game uh, for that. But I enjoy it a lot because I have a bit of a computer science background. So, last video, we figured out how to make a NOT gate, an AND gate, 3 pin, 3 input AND gate, OR gate, 3 input OR gate, not NAND gate, or NOT AND, NOR gate, NOT OR, XOR, which is exclusive OR, um, and XNOR, which is the opposite of XOR. So, we have all of those combined, and I have a puzzle where I have to make a full adder which basically takes three inputs and what the output is is supposed to be the number of inputs that there are or it's also a sum i guess you're adding together uh three inputs that are either zero or one so the output or sum could equal zero one two or three and that's shown in the sum and carry however um i think you could think about it uh this way where the carry is the first digit of binary and sum is the zeroth digit of binary where if there's zero inputs you would output zero zero if there's one input you would output zero one if there's two inputs you would output one zero and if there's three inputs you would output one one now it's kind of just adding but you can actually break down the sum and carry outputs into their own little logic solutions i guess and let's look at uh, sum let's start with sum right sum is only outputting a one if one of the inputs are on or if three of the inputs are on otherwise known as if there's an odd number of inputs and in a previous puzzle we did do something that only outputs on if there are an odd number of inputs and it kind of looks like this where you take an xor of the first two and then you would xor it with the xor of the next two but there's only a third one so you just do a second xor and that would go towards sum One second. You guys are saying I'm a little quiet. I can't make myself louder, unfortunately. This is like as loud as I can get, but I mean, I think this is all right too. I think we kind of need that for getting into the zone of the programming stuff. We need the music, but either way, we're chilling now. It's a bunch of XORs for some, and let's see. Can I test this real quick? Okay, annoyingly, it stops here. I would love to just test it for the sum alone. But I guess it just doesn't let me do that because, okay, carry needs an output. Um, you know what? Let me just have a placeholder. This is obviously not how you do it. I just want to test it for the sum. We can check current sum to the desired sum at the bottom. And the desired sum is at least right. So now the carry. The carry seems to only be on if there are two or more inputs, which I think is you could just kind of not brute force, but you could brute your way through it. I'm going to take three just regular AND gates. This will basically check if the first two are on, then the current sum would be on. Same with uh, the first one and the third one, and same with the second one and the third one. So if two out of three of these are on, it should put a positive output, and you can combine that with OR. You like my mustache? Thank you. Yeah, I guess I should respond to chat a little bit. I just wanted to get going with the puzzle just to get the game kickstarted because I know, like, I, I get this puzzle. The next one might be harder. I'll probably be chatting with you guys a bit more during then. But now we can tab through this and see the uh, output is equal to the desire. And, okay, I beat the puzzle. Go to the level map. A lot more stuff here. You don't even get half adder? I did that last episode. This was the half adder. Or maybe you're thinking use a half adder to build a full adder. No matter. Am I doing no shave in November? Probably not. I, I shaved this morning. I think I'm just doing whatever the hell I want with beard November. I've actually never had to think about it before. Not going to lie. But the input and the output of this level are using bytes instead of bits. 
One of the new components you are given takes a bite and splits it into bits, and the other does the opposite. So a byte is like eight bits. And the idea is it'll take a big input and it'll just kind of output the number. So what this level wants me to do is double the number. Is this game audio or my own music? It's the game audio. So actually, this is pretty new, right? There's also, I guess, a number into signal here. So if I want to double the number, what it looks like I have to do is take the input from one, I'll put it to two, and then two to four. Play this game and don't remember bytes existing like this ever. Maybe they changed it. Uh, it looks like I just got to double every single input. At least that's how I would imagine it should be done. Whether or not that's right, I guess we'll find out. Nice. Okay. Doubling everything. Seems pretty good. Um, I'm going to stay on the left side of this track. What's this here? A bit switch. Oh, wow. We're introducing some new stuff here. If components output different values on the same wire, you get an error. However, some components have gray output pins. It is not outputting at all when the component is not enabled. This is the case for the bit switch component. When the top pin is red, the output is disabled. This means that more than one of these gray output, output pins can connect to the same wire and not cause an error as long as only one of them is enabled at a time. I'm going to need to see that in action, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to need to see this in action. Let me, let me think about this again. Some components have gray output pins. And, okay, the output is disabled. All right, so all it does is preventing an error. So I got to build an XOR gate using two NOT gates and two of these switches. So XOR is exclusive OR. The output is only on if one of these two inputs are on. Not zero, not two but only one. So. Okay. Well. No, 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 I don't want to view the solution. I want to view the um, manual. Nope. Nope. Damn it, I want to view that pop-up again. Here we go. This is reading comprehension. I seem to lack at it. It is a circuit simulator, that's true. Yeah. I wish I had better reading comprehension, but, um... Okay. More of one of these great output pins can connect to the same wire and not cause an error. So, I'm going to take two of these switches then. Um, and connect each of the inputs to one of them, yeah? So then... You're saying I can just merge this? Is this is this what it's suggesting I do? So if they're both off, it gives me an off. If they're both, if one of them's on, I don't get an on? Okay. If a green comes in, what exactly is happening? The top dot controls the switch. I need to act. The top pin is an input. Okay, thank you. That makes a bit more sense. So, let's see. How would I want to do this then? Maybe like this? Maybe I could just split it off from the same source? No, that doesn't make any sense either. Give me a second. So if there's power... What the hell? Okay, I need to just test this with brute force. So, let me reset. Nothing happens, and then something happens here. The issue is, people are saying, or this was saying, two gray outputs can... Merge? It doesn't look like they're merging. I don't think this is right for the second one. 
let, let me just let me test it right i feel like the only way to understand what's going on is to test it so i'm going to put this up here i'm going to test i get green i get green again what if they're both on now there's an issue okay now there's an issue so maybe i gotta figure out how to have that be off in this moment so i have a knots and that's what needs to happen can i shift this yeah i can how do i Let's see what's i gotta remember my controls shift and drag okay all right yeah i imagine i would need everything all right give me a second here I still don't really understand this. What the fuck? I'm sorry, guys. I These words are just short-circuiting my brain right now. This is how you guys feel during some of these puzzles, isn't it? I think it's literally just a reading comprehension thing. Um, when the top pin is red, the output is disabled. Okay. But and when the top pin is green, the output is enabled. Come on, you piece of shit. Move. Okay. So if the top output is green, then the input's in. And this is what I was doing before, right? So this way with the top one if the input is in the output is in so maybe i could take the input and then put it through a knot and then drag it down to here so the bottom one would only be on if the top one were off and what kind of output does this give does this give the desired output no this is still wrong Unfortunately, that's not it. So. Yeah, I have not used all my knots. That's true. They don't send a signal at the same time. That might help, actually. I kind of did assume they both sent a signal simultaneously. Let me try something else, then. Hmm. All right, what if take oh my god. Take this knot, connect it up here, maybe to this. Take another knot. Uh same idea. All right, what happens if I have an opposite going into this? Just again, let me test this. All right. So, if it's off, then this would be on bring it to the other switch so this would be right this would still be wrong because both of them are red nah not quite it damn you switch why is this breaking my brain So, I still don't understand why, um, hold on, actually, I guess I kind of understand why this is wrong. I don't like that it's wrong, but I do understand it. I don't like that it's wrong. I think the gray output is just what was tripping me out the most. <laughs> okay. The tr gray output was tripping me out the most. I feel like if I get the simpler version explained to me, I could then extrapolate this to harder versions. But something about this concept just doesn't make sense to me. Gray means lack of signal. So, 
how about this? Maybe I could work backwards, all right? If I want the output to be green when the first input is on and the second input is off, how would I want to set this up? Well, I guess I could take... Um, oh, no. Maybe I could start something totally different. Like, start something like this, almost. Mmm. Ah, fuck. Yeah, one be the power, the other one be on, I guess. Yeah, let me, let me think about this. One on, one is the power, the other one is the signal. So, in this case, it would only give a green if both of them are on right now. That's the issue. So that's not that's not close to it. Um, that's not what I want for the output. But maybe I can work with that. Okay, actually, maybe I could work with that. Because in a way, I guess this is an AND gate. I guess that's why people are saying it's an AND gate. I'm like, why should I care about AND gates? And maybe it's not about caring about AND gates. It's just the fact that it kind of is an AND gate right now. I think that's what's annoying. So, because it's an and, um, how does that actually help me though? That has nothing to do with the output. Hmm. How about this? Let me, um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to XOR, just down here, just to see if I remember right. Oh no, it doesn't label stuff. Oh no, which one was XOR? Okay. XOR and the OR and the NAND. Okay, NAND is easy. OR, how do you get OR from switches? Hmm. How do you get or? Because what I could do then is make NAND like this. That's M. This is NAND. How do I get or? Check manual. Unfortunately, it doesn't help anything yet. Hmm. My god. Yeah, so this is one half of it. How do I get ore from this? With especially with just one not gate, right? Hmm. I love hitting brick walls. Why do I feel like I just need to step back and maybe try a different puzzle? I feel like I, I can't do this right now. It just, it, it doesn't make any real sense to me. I feel like I can work better with bytes. Alright, bite knots. Invert each bit. <laughs> Alright, this is actually something that was building off the previous puzzle I actually solved. Where you take an input and you split it into eight inputs, basically. And specifically, it wants me to invert each bit. Interesting. Well, I imagine before I do this... Well, I mean, there, there is a really easy way to do it, yeah? Oh my god, please drag. I do wish the controls were a little nicer. I mean, I could literally just invert each bit like this. There's probably maybe a better way to do it. Maybe there isn't. I'm gonna I'm gonna just do it the obvious way, right? I do wonder if there's a more elegant way. Maybe it'll teach me later. Maybe this is as elegant as it gets. Got to have the zigzags and knots. Looks like nice with the triangles.
click instead of drag components to stamp multiple in one go. Awesome, thanks. All right. You swap them. How about this? Byte or, okay. So we're doing logic gates, but with a lot more input. So you or each of the bytes and output the result. Okay, so because we're working in 8-bit, it really is just eight ors. That's actually, whoops, I did it wrong again. So click, then drop, and I could place more if I wanted to. Here, or, 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 that's seven, let's go eight. And then I'll combine it back in. All right, there we go, good exercise of wiring. I can copy paste across levels. Interesting. I don't know how. I don't know if learning how is a good idea right now. I'm just gonna or every single bit. Or, 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 or. Yeah, this is where editing would come in and make it click. In the meantime, I guess I'm still kind of trying to think about what exactly is going on with the switches. How do I need to think about it differently in order to actually figure it out? Because right now, the way I've been thinking about it has not helped me at all. The wire management is gross. Yeah, it's, it's pretty gross, but it works. <laughs> the classic spaghetti. Damn, that took a long time to test. Imagine doing that step by step. Because, yeah, here's the thing. Now I'm back to here. <laughs> <laughs> I can only avoid it for so long. The switch is like a door. I think I need to maybe work backwards. I think that actually might be more of it. Where it's like, if I have an output, what would I want for an input? Hmm. Or... Maybe don't think of it as an XOR. That might be a good idea. I'm not trying to optimize it. It's more that I'm forced to use two knock gates and two switches to make an XOR, which I guess is actually just a bit switch. Right. So, what I could do is something like Mm. How about this? How about this? I have one of them. Okay, this might be it. And I, I don't yet know why this works. I guess I'll just need to understand it for myself. I have an idea where both of the inputs go into both the switches, but... One of them is the one that goes in the top for one is switched. And I guess the knock gates are there for one of them. Now, I don't know if that's the case. I imagine, though, exactly one of these would be on at any given moment. So the bottom would never have an overload. And that's why, yeah, because I've swapped the input order, only one of them can be on. This is a guess. I have no idea if this is going to work for the record. So here, okay, if the top one is on, then one of the switches would be on, okay. And then if the bottom one was on, we'd also have one of the switches be on because it's symmetrical. And then if both of them are on, ah, there we go. So it's still impossible for both the gray outputs to be on because of the setup I did beforehand. Interesting. Yeah, it's impossible for both grays to be on. Now I can do this. Uh, hopefully, well, let's see. Add the two input bytes. Each output bit in the output should be a result of the addition of the corresponding bits from the inputs and potentially carry. If the result does not fit in eight bits, turn the output carry um, uh, green. So, okay. The carry is just the ninth bit. 
And then finally, there's an input carry as well. This is useful for chaining together byte adders to add larger numbers. You can think of this carry as adding either zero or one. And then there's hints. Okay, so I'm adding together this input with this input. Wait, no, what? No, okay, it's the opposite order. Which I'm adding together these two numbers. And then this is just adding one more, I guess, if you want to. So I'm going to be adding a lot. I hope I don't have to use the switch, but something tells me I do. So, of course, I'm going to be expanding these. Okay, how do I copy paste? This, this is where I want to figure out how to copy paste in this damn game. Because otherwise, I can't do anything if I, I can't... Well, I mean, I can do something. It's just annoying if I can't copy paste. Like, between levels, specifically. Like, I want to go to... Nope. Well, I guess I haven't really added. Maybe, maybe actually copy paste wouldn't help me much here. Oh, it's just control C, control V. All right, perfect, perfect. So let's see. If I'm adding together the two numbers, I want to actually go back to my full adder just to kind of get an idea. Yeah, I've done doubling, but not adding. Okay. So if I'm adding together a single bit, it's XORs for the sum, and then, oh, I really brute force the carry. Hey, actually, you know what? Before I move on, is this the simplest way to do this? Does anyone know? The full adder. No. Okay. Can I maybe use one fewer gate? Two of them? You're doing five blocks total. So one fewer. Okay. One fewer. Um, what would that look like? Hmm. Xors, I guess. Um. Oh man. Interesting. I'll have to keep that in mind. Some people said that it probably doesn't matter anyway because you can just use this as a module. How would I do that? Ah! Oh, that does help a lot, actually. Oh my god. I have an adder module. Okay, I, I see now. That is much appreciated. I thought I would have to do it all from scratch. Okay. This adder module adds three bits. So, I gotta figure out exactly what this... Well, would it work with two inputs? I don't think it would. Yeah, it's gonna... <sighs> okay, well, here's my thought. Here's my thought. Right, if we're adding in three inputs, this is either a one or a zero, so this is in the ones plate place, so I would add together once. So, I would add those together, and then I would get a couple things. First off, I would get, which I hope the top one is the ones place. Yeah, the, the top one is the ones bit, and then this is the carry. So this would then go into the next adder, in which I would take these. And I'll probably put it here, connect this down here. This is going to look like spaghetti. But you kind of see how I'm taking the carry from the ones place and then adding it to the twos place. And then you take the output first one, put it in the twos place, and this gets carried over to the next adder, right? Because, like, if you imagine you're adding numbers and you kind of line them up, you take, you take the sum and then you carry the leftover. And this is what the carry is. And honestly, I'll just do it by hand. I'll let it look like spaghetti. It's gonna look like it's gonna look awful, and I think there's not much I can really do about it. <laughs> uh, here's what I will do though. I will make um, 
a few more of these. <laughs> oh god, I am still missing one, actually. No, I'm not. I can't count. Yeah, this looks absolutely nightmarish. But you know what? Just don't do that. Whatever you do, don't drag the whole damn thing. And you'll be good. And I'm just going to take this, put it in here. Take the carry, bring it over. Get the 16s. Is there like a cleanup function in this game? Where it'll just automatically make it look nicer? <laughs> that would certainly be nice. If For nothing else, for um, aesthetic reasons. It's not like... I mean, it probably would help. Readability does help with puzzle solving. If you can see what's going on, you can understand it better. And already, I think I'm noticing that uh, I've lined this up poorly. Yeah, speaking of readability, I'm already fallen victim to this. Yeah, speak of the devil. I think I fixed it. Yeah, I think I fixed it. So then, once I'm out of outputs here, this last output goes to the carry, which is the ninth bit. This should just work. Let's see. Did anyone mention if there is a way to make it look nicer? Uh, just have joints make straight wires. Okay, so you just got to build it more cleanly. Damn, this is already pretty complex looking. Even though it's a pretty simple concept, there's a lot going on. You can make wire colors, you can color code stuff. Interesting. Negative numbers. Oh, hey, it's a binary little race. Okay. Did it get the subtraction first? They need negative numbers. The good old twos compliment. God, I have not seen this since college. It's the most comp common representation for negative numbers in binary. Here, the highest digit is negated. So instead of a 128, it's a minus 128. And then you just add up the rest because if you have everything, it will equal to negative one. Yeah, everything on will equal negative one. And then just this one on will be the lowest negative number. We can do a little race here, see how well my addition is. What is one in signed binary? Whoops. Just one and then submit 15. Okay, I guess it's just normal binary, making sure I can get this. Negative one. So negative one would be everything is on. Negative two would be get rid of the one. Negative three would look like this. Negative 14 would look something like... Ah, I pressed space too early. All right, try that again. Try that again. 15. Negative 1. Negative 2. Negative 3. Negative 7. So that's what it looks like. I, okay, I gotta understand this. No, that's fine. Alright. Just, I think there's a good way to cheat. I could think about this as like 13. Um, nope. Never mind. I can cheat it. Um, how do I... What's a fast way for me to think about this? I'm definitely better at regular binary than I am negative binary, so this will get um, a good. This will get a good advantage for me. Flip the bits, then add one. So minus three. Flip the bits, add one. Ooh, okay. So thirteen. Flip thirteen. Let's eight four one. So these should be off, and then. Yeah. No, I still don't get it. Let's see. Minus two, minus three, minus two again, minus 15. So this is 16, 15. All right, let me figure out why this is the case. Couldn't do it in time. I think I just need to brute force it a little bit. Yeah, I think I just need to brute force it a little right now. Yeah, that's, that's all I got right now. Uh, foo. There we go. Oh, I didn't press space. Flip all the bits and add one. See, that's my problem right now. So, I sh Okay, fine.
Come on. I want to get better at this for real. Flipping all the bits and adding one is weird when you're actually in a timed environment. You can definitely do it slow. Okay, so this is two, right? This is two. So I flip every bit and then add one. Realistically, I feel like I should be subtracting one. That's an easier way for me to think about it. Flip all the bits and subtract one is not right, but I think it's a helpful step, right? So 16 is this. You flip every bit, subtract one. Or add one. Mm. No, it's adding. I think I'm just not caring. Maybe that's my issue. 15. Minus one. Minus two. Minus three. Minus four. So this is four. And then you flip it all. Add one. Add one. Okay, my adding one step just isn't making sense with the way that this game works. Yeah, the computers are nice. You don't have to do binary by hand. That's true. I did not realize how, how much harder negative binary is to do by hand. Like, I think I just need to... Mm, there we go. Yeah. Oh, this is so weird. This is so weird. How about this? I can think of this as like minus six. Yeah, so I can think of this as minus 10 right now. I can think of this as minus six. I think this is actually the way I think of it right now. I think of this as minus 14, and I just kind of invert 14. I think about this as minus 20, and do... Nope. Uh, minus 20 is... Nope. Why did I not get that one? Minus 20... Maybe I just literally had it. One. 15. Minus one. I think this is minus one. Should think of this as minus two. Think of this as minus 15. I should think of this as minus eight. Or seven. I should think of this as minus nine. I should think of this as minus 11. Should think of this as everything on, I guess. I should think of this as minus 13. This is the only way I can do this. I should think of this as minus five. Because right now I'm just doing five in red binary. Uh, minus 13, which looks like this. Minus 24, which looks like that. Minus 16, looks like that. Minus three, or minus two, looks like this. Minus 11, looks like that. Minus 29. So that's going to be pretty big. Um, I think we got there. Minus 24 looks right. Minus 34. So it would look like this. There we go. Minus 38, which would look like that. Minus 3. Oh, shoot. Shoot. Uh, right now, I've just lost track of controls, and we got that. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't think I need to keep doing this. Whoops. Let's let's get out of here. Yeah, I'm almost thinking of doing it in reverse. It's not the best way to do it by hand, but for this game, I think it was easier. I don't know. Having it be timed and having the inputs work like that, I feel like it forces you to have to think about it in a different way. Some crazy idiot. Thank you for the... Wow, very generous gift. Glad you enjoyed the videos, man. Happy to keep them entertaining. I hope you guys are <laughs> bearing with this stumbling through of stuff. This is difficult. Like, it's not like I'm reading through a textbook. I'm having to figure this out through scratch. Um. So, the signed negator. Taking the input as signed, where the eighth bit is negative uh, 128 would make a component that takes a number and negates it. So example four negated would become negative four, negative nine negated would become negative nine. So I basically just multiply the number by negative one. 
Okay, interesting. Multiply it by negative one. So, invert the bits, then add one. Is that the idea? Right? So, how do I... I could invert the bits with an 8-bit not, but then I need to add one. Um, so then I'm going to do an 8-bit... Um, hold on. Split this up. Yeah, split this up. If I'm going to add one... I guess it would look like this. I'm also going to have to turn it back into one byte, and this will be the output. Um, and if I'm just adding one, it might be... Actually, I might not even need to split it. Oh, this is... This is... Yeah, yeah. This is silly, right? Because I have the adding here. I'm, like, adding two inputs. It's not a big deal, right? Because I can add this. Then I can add a zero and a one. And the one is on. And the zero is off, right? Let me just double check. There's, yeah. I need a second then. Because... I don't remember which output is which. <laughs> That's my issue. Which output is which? Nope. Not this one. Nope. The top output is the number. No need to add the zero. Oh, I figured it needed an input. Like the component to see its labels. Oh, thank you. Okay, there shouldn't be a carry here, ever. But, maybe there would be? No, there shouldn't be. That ah, works. Good, no carry needed. Um, I'm just wondering if there's any other way I should think about this. Would it still work without this off? How about that? You don't need an input. Alright. It will default to off if there's no input. That's helpful, I think. So now, actually, now I'm forced to go back to here. What was this, anyway? Oh, this was like... Oh, I have to, I have to double back to the level before. This was the circle. I didn't show this in the video... Uh, because I wanted to save if one is relevant. It's relevant now. I guess the idea is you're supposed to make a circuit whose output, or is whose input depends on its output. And that's what's tricky. Um, which, I mean, it's fine now, right? You just make a big-ass circle, and the details don't really matter. But now you gotta actually input that. So this is the delay line component. So, uh, it takes its input and outputs it one tick later. Construct the circuit that outputs the same as the input, just delayed by two ticks. Okay, so you have the input, and then each column is a tick. This is two ticks later. Interesting. Have a delay line, just delays it until the next tick. Oh, well, okay, so I just, I just dragged two delay lines. Is that what it wants me to do, right? So it starts with nothing. The input goes into the delay, and then it outputs in the next tick, and then it outputs in the next tick, and then it's off. Okay, so that's just delayed. Interesting. That's actually a pretty easy way to go about it. In a previous level, you learned how we don't allow circular dependencies. Now you must learn the one exception. The delay line is allowed to depend on its own input, is it because its input does not influence the rest of the circuit until the next tick? Square pins in the game never affect the output in the same tick. They therefore never cause circular dependencies. Output red on the even ticks and green on the odd ticks. Interesting. So, so this is where like an actual circle would be helpful, yeah? Could I just do... 
Okay, the input's always off. So what I could do, actually, is take this input. And then I think I, I would do a not gate if I want to reverse it. Where is my not? Here it is. I almost wish I could have the not gate also read, like, uh, left to right or right to left. So actually, maybe this would be right, right? Like, is this independent of the input? Because here it's off, and then here it's on, off, on. Yeah, okay, I don't even, I don't even need to connect the input to anything. You can use spacebar to rotate? Mmm, doesn't seem to work for me. Oh, there we go. Hold on then. If that's the case, I'm gonna draw it up a little bit a little nicer. Do a nice little box like this. It's a loop! It's an actual loop. Off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Cool. Thanks. Hey, a nice background. <laughs> um, when invert is green, output the opposite of the value. Otherwise, just output the value. Invert is XOR. <laughs> I have to make an XOR. I can, it's, it seems to be a one-to-one -one with XOR. And then run it. I made XOR. <laughs> All right. Feels like cheese just because I didn't, you know, it feels like I probably should have internalized it in a different way, but it is just XOR. Um... So, when the bit selector's input is red, output byte A, otherwise output byte B. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. So, where's my damn switch? So, if it's... Wait, what, which color does it want for which? If it's red, I'll put the top one. So this is where I would actually use the switch, yeah? This is where I actually understand the switch. So I could almost hook this up to the switch and then invert it for the top one, right? And not invert it for the bottom one. And only one of these will be on it once because it's either, right? Because it's either going to be the top one or the bottom one. I have a bite switch. Oh. Okay, that is probably... It's the same idea, but I guess there's an 8-bit switch. I didn't notice. Okay. Good call, good call. Because now, I mean, I can merge these and only one of them will be on at a time. So this just works. Yep. Send it. <laughs> cool. Okay. The switch. We're getting it now. So the bus... This level has two byte inputs and two byte outputs. Your goal is to copy from one of the inputs to one of the outputs. The first bit output determines which input you should copy from. The second bit input determines which output you should copy to. Wait, two byte inputs. Do you ever just read something and be like, I don't know what I just read? It's, I said it all out. I, I don't remember a single word from this. Um, copy from one input to one output. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I understand now. So I have four switches, two knots. Um, I feel like this is not too bad. It's very similar to the previous level, just a little bit bigger. There's two phases, right? The first one decides which input it goes to. And then the second one decides which output it goes to. So, which input is used is the previous level. You just do this. However, how do I know which one it wants? Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe any order is fine. 
Because then I would put them into new switches, and then one of them would be like this. And the other would take the knot. And then I could merge these. Wait, what am I doing? I should merge these. And then put this here. And then do it like this. There we go. We chill. Hopefully it's not like... Hop. This is wrong. Copy from input 1 to output 0. Okay, so I just have this backwards. Yeah, this is what I was worried about. I wasn't sure. Like, did it say anywhere? They had the swip flop flip this. Okay, so this is right. This is right. This is right. It should all be right now. <laughs> nice. Said on the left. Awesome. Jonathan C, thank you for the five bucks. Love how serious I am about puzzles and like keep it up. Yeah, a lot of people don't seem to take puzzles seriously, and I, I, I really like them. They're fun. I mean, I, I grew up doing a lot of puzzles, and you know, wanted to share that love to the world, uh, even when they're difficult. I mean, this game has been nothing but difficult, especially today. But it's always fun when you get the hang of it. Like now that the switch has flipped for switches in my head, I like them a lot more. But the very like the initial hump for me of that, that was tough. But now it's like, now we're back to cool puzzle brain stuff. Uh, the delay line only allows this to save a value for one tick, but sometimes a component that can save a value for longer periods of time is useful. I want you to build such a component. In this level, I have two inputs. When the first input is green, update the save value, and the second input is the value. Always output what is currently saved. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. This is an um, interesting way to think of it. Okay. So if the save is off... Let me, look, let me look at this again. If the save is off, the output gets delayed. Yeah, I believe this is what is called a latch, right? If the save is off, the output gets delayed a bit more, it looks like. No, that's not it. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me see this again. Hmm. Okay. Save enable. Output what is saved. When the first put it is green update the save value so value is green it should be updated value is red be updated so then we got green to green red to red and then here and the value is red and save is green so red to red here you guys can see my mouse hopefully barely red goes to red here but then because save is off I mean, nothing's going to change because it's the same value as before, but when the value changes because the save is off, we don't have green to red. We still have red because this save is off. And then here, green is on when I guess it's still red. We would have red to red again. Green is on, so we'd have green to green. Green is on, green to green. Save is off. It still keeps the green because that's what it was. This is a terrible way to explain it. But I feel like this is how I have to understand it. Yeah, like it will only change if it's green. So, actually doing this... Hmm. Doing this is kind of interesting. I guess there could be a switch. Um, would it be a switch? Would it be a delay? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, maybe there's a cleaner way to think about it, right? Maybe I don't want to think about it in the game as terms, but maybe I want to break this down into, like, different logic. So, I'll get that message after this level. I want to see if I can figure this out, right? So, if these two are on, this is on. If these two are on, this is on. Only one is on, this is off. One on, off, off, off. 
I mean, this is like an X nor. Hmm. I mean, this this happens. No, no, I don't think I can think of it that way. I don't think of it that way because you have two reds here, two reds here, with the next output being different. So I definitely have to think of it in the game's terms. <laughs> oh man, I do have to think of it in the game's terms. Fair enough. All right, so we're storing something in memory. And I click on this to see the top one is says don't save and the second one's the actual input. That's how it is right now. So let's think about this right now. I could do a switch. I could do a switch because it's kind of like an AND gate. This is the toggle. This is what goes through. How do I get it to save what it was, though? Because, like, this will work for some. Like, it'll work here, it'll work here, work here. But then, it's still off, still off, still off, still off, still off, still off. Now it's back on. It's going to hit a roadblock now. So. So, this is kind of interesting now. If there's no output here, could I ever do this? Or do you think it ever overload? Okay, it would short circuit. But, hold on. But, hold on. This is where a second switch comes in. This is where a second switch comes in. Um, hold on. Whoops. Come on. I'm thinking if I invert it like this. I feel... Oh, I had it for a second. Damn it. I had it. Where did it go? Oh, I had it for a second. Like... Hmm... Oh, I fucking had it for a second. Oh, that's painful. Um. Okay, so this is kind of an and. This is the current updated value. I feel really close. I feel really, really, really close. Like, it feels like I could almost do this, but this isn't quite it either. What could be the other input to the switch? Now, I, this is really close, but it's not quite there. It's really close. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, where is the hint? I want the damn hint. Only one delay line. Truth table for what should go into the delay line. I think the truth tables are my roadblock right now. My brain doesn't... It doesn't, um, compute with truth tables. Inputs. Oh, fuck. This doesn't make any sense to me. Um, the inputs are the two level inputs and the output of the delay line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One delay line. Think about what should go into the delay line. Okay, okay. It's a very interesting hint. 
It's just the way to think about it, but it doesn't compute with my way of thinking. <laughs> it unfortunately... I guess I should try to rewire my brain to think about it in the game the way the game wants me to think about it. Because I think that's actually a good hint for that purpose. I just don't want to think that way. But I, th I think it's an interesting hint. Um, I think it's an interesting hint. Okay. Check the manual. It doesn't, it doesn't give anything. It doesn't really give anything. So let's see what else I got. So right now it's outputting the saved value. But it will go off. So the previous value would come maybe through a switch actually. Hold on. Oh, I think I get it, actually. I think I actually get it. I think I actually get it. I think I actually get it. Hold on. I'm going to have this go backwards. Um, you have the delay kind of coming here, and then I could maybe take a knot from the toggle, yeah? And that would go to this switch. So only one of these switches are on at any given time, and then this loops back to here. This, this has to be it, right? So it works just fine in the beginning, but then we get to the inflection point, and yes, that's the one. Okay, so anytime there's switches, you probably should have two switches that have a case where exactly one of them is on. Exactly one switch is on at any given time, and that way I can cover all my cases. Right? So you have a case that if the first switch is on, and then you have a case if the second switch is on. Okay, I have some uh, <laughs> generous people to get back to, which let's see if I can find this real quick. Um, How do I? Oh, there we go. Uh, Zone, thank you for the 10 bucks saying I saw your first episode of this game. I instantly bought it, then spent two days beating the main story with a friend, being able to watch the first episode fully before watching it fully. Now you can watch the stream. Welcome. Uh, hope you enjoy some of the same struggles that I'm sure you've gone through, that I'm going through now. It's a tough game, but it's very cool. And just... Just... Oh, boy. To Chico? Thank you for the 10. Love seeing this stuff during this... During the day, gives me a chance to take a lunch break from classwork. Or even his white noise while doing classwork. This stream has been great to relax to. Thank you. <laughs> Are, did the, is the screams of my agony enjoying? Is, it, is that entertaining? It might be. I think I'm s slowly, slowly training my brain. But it is training. So, create a circuit that can save or load a byte. When the first input is green, load the memory and send it to the output. When the second input is green, save the input byte. The output has an enable pin. Enable it only on load. Okay. The output pin is only enabled on load. So, I should just connect this. Yeah? Yeah. That, that seems to be what it wants. Otherwise, let me double check this again. It feels like it's what I just did, but for a bite. And let me see. What do I have here? I have the one bit memory. Like, it seems like I would just do one bit memory, but for eight bits. Is that not what it's asking of me? Right? Like, I would do this. Line it up. And then do a bunch of one bit memory that's also based off the input or whatever. Maybe there's a cleaner way to do it. Yeah, okay. Right now it's literally just a space thing. There's gotta be a way to assemble this that doesn't look like ass. There, there has to be a way that doesn't look like ass. It's going to look like ass. <laughs> All right, let it look like ass Tyler. Just. Embrace the ass. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, um, double check the save. This is save enable. So this will go to the top part of all of these. Because I'm just doing it one bit at a time, eight times. Oh my god, this looks terrible. It looks so bad. No. Ah! Okay. 
is at is actually just straight up a functional problem. Let's maybe back this off a bit. Maybe bump this up a little. Right here. Okay, connect it to all the top parts. We go on Mega Spaghetti. Yeah, it wants me to do this eight times. So you take one and you put it in here. Then you take one, output it to one. Take two, input it to somewhere. Just make sure you output it back into two. And then same goes with four. Eight. Yeah, it's true. I guess I could split it off <laughs> in a better spot, but it's too late. Okay, I, I promise... I, I don't promise. I'll maybe try next time to make it less spaghetti. Because, yeah, there's definitely better ways to set this up. I, I, can't, I can't promise that I'll do it. I, I really can't. But this works. <laughs> I swear. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious spaghetti. Tasty noodles. Uh, we're getting up here. Closer to our arithmetic and memory. The one bit decoder. Create a the component that can switch a signal between two pins. Switch a signal between two pins. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So if the input is red, I would give the output to this top one. And if the input is green, I would give a green output to the bottom one. So, I think the idea is, well, my thought is doing it with two switches. This already feels like it's too much stuff, but here's what I'm thinking, right? I have this, and I think I'll just take it on, because it is going to send it on. The on is what's going to, oh, this already looks like ass. This already looks like ass. It's fine. The on will go to both of the inputs like this and this can just go here and then this can go here massively overcomplicating this shut up it'll work but yeah i probably am and then i'm thinking with the knot i can connect to one switch and then connect the other switch i mean this works <laughs> uh but let's see Oh yeah, I guess I was thinking about it in terms of switches. Shut up, I'm, I'm getting the hang of switches. There is a much easier way to do this. That's kind of funny. When you take this input, you hook it up, you push a knot. This goes here and the other goes here. Two solutions. <laughs> uh. Hey, at least I actually for sure get switches now. I think that was important for me. Um, a three-bit decoder. So, eight combinations with three bits. Make a circuit that selects... So, basically, I'm going from binary to decimal in a way. Exactly one bit should be on at any point in time. Let me think. Invert binary. I wonder if uh, my previous solution will help me out at all. Probably not. Oh, I have the one bit decoder. That's actually probably handy, yeah? Give me a second to think about this. The one bit decoder toggles between two outputs. So, let me see. Input one, input one is at the top. So this is the one's place. This is the two's place. This is the four's place. At least it better be. Hmm. Oh, this is this is kind of strange. I feel like I'm gonna need a, a lot of these. Oh, this is really strange. I 
I can toggle the inputs without pressing play. Nice. That is helpful, actually. That is very helpful. Hmm. Into the think tank I go. Well. I don't know if this actually quite helps me yet. Hmm. Like, I, I guess there's like a really brutish way to do it. I, I don't, I don't want to do the brutish. Yeah, I, I don't want to. Yeah, I, I don't want to do the damn triple ands or figure out which is which. I, I don't want to do that. I definitely want to use the one bit decoders. Hmm. So. And these are normal one bit inputs. Damn. Okay, well, here's a thought. No, never mind. It's. What the hell? No, this is really weird. Um. I can do brutish on favor and simplify it mathematically. Well. There is no on paper for me. There is only the screen. I am here on the screen. And I've got to do this on the screen. So like. The brutish way is. For if one. What I could do is. Do. And I mean this is really brutish. Really really brutish right. I would take a three way and. For one. I would take. The first input, and then two not gates. Hook those up to the end. And this would be on for one. <laughs> so I could do this like eight times. <laughs> I, I could do that like eight times, but th that seems awful. Genuinely terrible. So I'm not going to do that. First one should be zero. It wants... Oh, actually, yeah. I guess it is a zero. So I guess it even would be three knots, right? I guess the fact that it started with one kind of tripped me up. I guess the zeroth bit is not a thing. Either way. You get the idea. This would be for the first bit. What I just did would be for the second bit. I don't want to do that. Like, I really don't want to do that. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel like getting the actual elegant solution is probably important here. I feel like I'd learn a lot. So how would I want to think about this? Well, maybe I hold on, let me undo this. How can I simplify this in a way that also simplifies the next part? Like maybe I could just draw up the brutish solution for the first two and then figure out how to simplify. And already we've entered Spaghetti Town. Population me. The first two are like this. Now. They both have bottom knots. Maybe I could do eight and gates. Maybe that's the idea. Yeah, maybe I could do eight man gates. Been trying to tell you all, but you can move components with wires still attached by double clicking and dragging. Yeah, I guess I can also shift click. I can do that. That's true. Appreciate the uh, appreciate the uh, the help. 
Yeah, I think I bet you can do eight and gates at the end. And you know what? Let me just kind of get this out of the way. Maybe try to make it look, whoops, nice. What do you hear? Here, here. So it'll be spaghetti-ish, but it's not gonna have that many components. So I need a triple and that leads to the first bit, one that leads to the second bit, third bit, fourth bit. This is, I know it still looks brutish, but the first half is going to be a little bit more bearable. Because the first half, I'll just use uh, three decoders. Right? Three decoders. Because then I can go from three decoders into eight and gates. I mean, that seems pretty simple, I think. So then, I would want this to be the case. I guess I could also, hmm. Can I make it look like not ass? That's all I'm thinking about. I literally have the solution here. I think I just, I'm gonna let it look like ass, right? Because you can see in the case that all of them are off, it would go to the first one. If the first one's on, then I would want all the greens to go here. And then for the second, I mean, frankly, you kind of get the idea, I think, right? So for the third bit, it's basically only input two would be on, so and then the other two would be off. Fourth one, has first two inputs on and the third one off and then the fifth one has only the third input on whoops that's the wrong one and then the third and you know what? I had a nice system here let's stick to the system first and third inputs on and then second and third inputs on. Did the third wrong? Well, I guess I'll find out shortly. I, I drew something wrong, so that's, that's a great start. This will be easy to correct, I think. Yeah, it'll be easy to correct. I'm not too worried. Right, let's step through it. First one's one. Second, uh, I did the second one wrong. Uh, clearly, I miswired something. Maybe, let's see. So I'll take this, drag it here. And I'll just, I'll delete these wires and just start over for these parts. So the second on, it should be this connection. Should be this connection. And it should be this connection. Try it again. Okay, I, I drew the seventh one wrong. I drew the seventh one wrong. Is it opposite? Did I just... I think... Mm. Why is the seventh one still on? Oh, that's the eighth one! Oh. I'm still thinking in binary. Wait, so what even happens here? Both of these are on. Damn it. I have the idea I'm just drawing it wrong, I guess. So, okay, I feel like this whole bottom part is just drawn wrong. How about this? One's right. Two is backwards. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, damn it. For two... I have this. Oh, I am mapping it backwards. Fuck. Oh. Oh my god. I am ma mapping it backwards. I think I'm even wrong then for three. Yeah, I, I did all these wrong. 
Ugh. I was confused on which input was which. I guess I could have kept the ands, whatever. It's easier for me this way. Please make vertical lines. Well, then I have to click multiple times. Okay. So let me make sure I get this right. Input two. If input two is on, then for the third bit, it should look like this. And then if both of them are on, it would look like this. You follow the greens and you connect them. Can I use color wires? Well, I can barely do regular wires. I'm terrible with the UI in this game. But then we have only five on. So you take green and then you connect it to the fifth one. And then these two take the green, connect it to the and. Six. These two take the green, connect it to the and. And then all of them on. I don't like that bottom means on. I do wish that was the it was the opposite. It just feels backwards to me. Either way, got it. Next. Um arithmetic. Create a device that can or, nand, nor, or, and two inputs. The third input will be the instruction. So a zero is or, one is nand, two is nor, three is and. And I can't move the red components in this level. What the hell? Okay. So. Interesting. Very interesting, actually. Hold on. So, or, I could bitwise or here. I should use color here. All right, well, or will be orange blue, and the basic one. So, do I have an 8 bit box? 8, what? 8, what? What the hell is this? Have I seen this before? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, interesting. Oh, very interesting. Okay, hold on. Hmm. So, here's what I'm thinking, actually. What I'm going to do in the first place is do all the functions first. Like, first I'll do an 8-bit OR. Next would be... Uh, what are What are the... What's the list? Next is NAND. Um, wait, I don't have an 8-bit NAND? Uh-oh. I don't like that. Why don't I have an 8-bit NAND? Why didn't it make me do that? Okay, I'm trying to figure out if I can do an 8-bit NAND without having to freaking open it up and then manually do it. Oh yeah, De Morgan. Hold, that's, that's a good thought. Good thought. Um, let me see how De Morgan's principle works. NAND would be an AND, then invert the output. Or, it could be an or with an inverting the input. So, I could do two knots. Maybe one here, one here. Bring it down. Bring this down. And then I could do a separate or, which I guess I'll do a new color. Let's do white for this next one. Right? Right? So if the inputs are inverted, this is an 8-bit NAND. Uh, 
I'll put that maybe here. Next was what? Nor. A not or? Well, that... I feel like I could just have a separate not from here. Oops. I have a separate knot. Split this off maybe here. And have this be like, I don't know, pink. And then negate that here. Right? So I got the knot. And then and. Well, which is also not and. I already do not like this wire color right now. So then on the output, I could have like green. So here I've got... Or, uh, nor is above, and then and is here, and then, or nand is here, and then and is below. This is a bad order, but I have the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So now I just have to use this top one to choose between them, which I think is helpful for the mucks. Toggles, but it's a toggle. Toggles between two values. I need to toggle between four values. I was thinking, I guess I chain mux. Actually, yeah, I think I do chain mux. Now, I think it will be three of these total. That's what I think. I'll just place them here for now. And I also have to take this ore and split it up into eight bits. So, this here. The first bit. Oh, God, I'm going to need a different color for this. I really don't like these <laughs> coloring. Uh, we'll go yellow here. And apparently control E makes a wire yellow. Control E. Right. So you got one going here, then two going here. And I think I... No. Hold on. This would also go here. And then this would go here. You know what I'm going to do with this yellow? I'm going to do something that will make you guys happy. Straight lines. Ooh. Very straight. Very lines. Two is going to come on over and go whoop right there. So this top switch. Um, I got to pick between. Let's say or and nand. Or is blue. And it will come kind of like this. And then NAND was. So what this is saying is if the one bit is off, it'll output blue, which is or. And if the one bit is on, it'll output the pink, which is NAND. And this should go right here. And I, this being pink is misleading. This is why I don't like this. It's going to be gray. It's going to be gray, you piece of shit. Oh, I didn't hook up Nand. I hooked up Nor. Right. Good call. Good call. Uh, I should be hooking up Nand. I lost track. Good call. Good call. Okay. So then that would go to the second box. And then if the one's place is zero... I would put in nor, which is this. And then if it's one, I would put in and, which looks like that. And then the output goes into the next mux phase, where the two bit of the or determines if it's going to be one of or and and, or the other of nor or and. Well, whatever, it works. Trust me. <laughs> the, the source just trusts me, I guess. No, this is cool, though. This is really neat. It was cool to apply to Morgan's principle. I wonder if there's a better way I can explain this. So this is the dilemma I felt in the first video. I'm like, I've got the solution. How the fuck do I explain it? But, I don't know. Uh, you can just stare at this, and uh, it's probably a better explanation than I could give. So, next. 
Uh, let's do the last of memory. Holy shit, a working computer? Bro, <laughs> I'm getting close. Oh, I have a limited space puzzle. Oh no, it's testing my ability to cram stuff in. Uh, four bytes of memory in a limited space. Uh, oh boy. Cadence, thank you for the fiver. This is one of your favorite games. Once I beat the game, it's still very satisfying to optimize and complete with, uh, compete with others. I imagine optimizing will be satisfying. I have to do a bit of optimizing here. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm nervous. So one bit determines if I'm going to load. The other bit is I'm going to save. And then I have two address bits. Hmm. Oh, wait, but there's four inputs. So this is the load and save. Top is load. So I always do, you know, loop this around back. Oh, no. Well, I'm going to do load to load. Maybe, maybe like get this way out of the way. Since I have limited space, like I might as well do that. So then this is an input. This is an input. But this is a little different. This is not what I expected. I'm a software engineer, had an entire course in this shit, and it's still kind of <laughs> tough to understand this sometimes, so don't sweat it too much. Yeah! <laughs> I, I wanted to spread the knowledge to the world of how the computers work by learning it myself. And I feel like if I can explain it in a way that makes sense to a lot of people, I also would simultaneously explain it to myself in a way that I understand it. So I, it's also self-interested. Yeah, I guess it's just hard as hell. But I'm trying. I'm trying, damn it. I do feel my brain leveling up, gaining power slowly but surely. So, these two are the memory, but but I'm actually a little confused on what it's asking me though. Save or load from four different bytes of memory. So maybe I have to, okay. There's four places where I could save a value. The output is pulling from one of the memory states, right? It's pulling from one of the memory states, but first I have to save something there. And if I don't save anything there, then it's just gonna get zero. So I have to save it to one of four places and then the output pulls it from one of the four places. So, um, interesting. Let me take a look at this. Do I have a... I have an 8-bit memory. Well, let me take a look at this thing. How does this work? So load, save, save value. Sounds like it could be helpful. I think I need four of these. Yeah, I think I need four of these. That's, that's my first thought, right? One for each of the four bits of memory. So load, um, I'm actually going to draw from here. Right here. Perfect. Yeah, and the load will just take care of that. Now, I probably should take this, move it all like over here. I think I'm going to redraw this up here. So then... I think I want to merge it all, right? Because only one of these will be... Mm, I don't know if all of them want to... I don't know if one will be on at a time. I could zoom in, true. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> the whole box. I can see the whole damn thing. 
So this 8-bit memory, the save value. Uh, I guess the save, I'll just do like green. Put you down here. And then boop, and then boop, boop. Only one of these will be on at a time. Yeah, actually... Played this game and it brought you back to IT spec in high school. Thanks for videos. Yeah, glad you enjoy. Quite the memory here. This brings me back to college classes, but I don't think I ever actually learned what the hell this is in college. Um, Why do I have this here? Why is that there? <laughs> I also don't like this being like that. I'm just going to line that more cleanly. Next. So if only one of these will load at a time, that's very helpful because then I could just do this for retrieving, but then saving. Now, this seems like a good case for the, come on, one bit decoder. Well, save or don't save. Hmm. Give me a second, I think. This determines whether or not I save. So what it's going to be, I think, is a three-way and. Wow, it looks so big like this. Ah, shoot. Damn you, wire. I want you here. So you know what? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. With the green wire, you're going to go around the bottom then. Where you belong. So these ands. Let's just go purple right now. We'll determine on whether they save... And it's going to be based off three things. First off, it's going to be based on whether save is on. Put that here. Um, actually, I'll, I'll wire that here. That seems pretty convenient, to be honest. Here. 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 And then A0. For A0, we would have... This, I think I'm going to do diagonal wires. <laughs> A, zero. Next, we could have B, zero. So I'll follow the greens. B, zero. Three bit decoder exists. Where? Actually, where? B, zero, or A, oh wait, shoot. Does it matter? It might not matter. It might not matter. Okay, let me test something. So, output should be 245, it isn't. I'm getting 245. But, oh, yeah, I have a problem with this side. Okay, I think most things are right except for the post output here. Okay, let me see. So I got 245 saved in there. And then next, I should be outputting it, but I don't have that connected. 
What if I just do a little cheating right now? Just do like a quick connection here. Make sure this works as intended. 245 save. 245 delivered. Cool. Next. Action save 42 to here. Then it wants 42, but obviously that's not happening right now. Okay, so now I have to retrieve from only one of these four at any given time. So, hmm. This is probably why we don't want diagonal wires. So what I would want is a three-way AND between the top two outputs of these ands combined with load and i'm trying to think maybe that means i should start using like two-way ands i don't have the three-bit decoder otherwise yeah i think that that would be helpful so I, I, it's spaghetti right now. I have to despaghettify this. So what I'm thinking would be something like this. No, I don't know if this will despaghettify it. I think I'm actually willing to just delete this all, just because it is spaghetti, and then start with something that's a bit less spaghetti. So I actually like the idea of a bunch of two-way ands. And I mean, like, a ton of them. Also going to do another set of two ands. Looks like this. Oh, I don't have enough space yet. Hold on. I got to take these. Move them over a little. Like that. Because I need the save. I guess it's just yellow now. I need it to come through, do this. Okay, it's going to juke. Good. <laughs> this looks dumb, but um, it, it could work. It could work. I think I do a couple things with this. Oop. And then boop, and then boop, and then boop. This is actually non-ugly diagonal wires. Yeah, but I might have... N I'm not going to have enough space on the right side. Switches are smaller ands. Oh! Oh! I didn't even think about that. That's, that's genius. Smaller ands. Oh. Hold on onto something here you're onto something good okay hold on let's do which switch 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 um and then i wish i could i wish i could go ass to mouth here but unfortunately not Don't waste so much space on wires. Yeah, that, that's the tricky part, isn't it? I haven't done that yet. Okay, let's try this again. So the save. I could do something almost like this, maybe? Ooh, this is a bit more space efficient. Well, that, that's actually kind of interesting. Because then I could take these. Nope. And bring them down like this. Just do a simple gray connection for the boring stuff. So, uh, I think the whole point was then... I was going to do diagonal wires. <laughs> so let's see. Um, 
then I don't know it's 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 fine I was gonna do something like these two and then if a one is on I would want to do something like this it, yeah I'm not done yet don't worry it's, it's still got a bit to go so now I've got the cool diagonal wires so now what's nice is I can take all of this and go whoop here now I've got space afterwards now I need something for the outputs where I yeah I need more switches now the switch is not too bad I think let's see if I do it here it might work so we'll start with gray where the output goes to the switch wait yeah and these outputs will all just kind of merge together and then go to the outputs but then the trigger for the switch will be the output of the very first switch so I'm gonna go with what do I feel like going with for this even orange like I, I want to do this and does this work oh this works oh wait this is cleaner than the path I drew I can do this I can do that and I can do that wait I might have done a wrong one is my only issue I might have done a wrong one um, we'll see we'll see is the whole point of the low load pin I'd use the 8 bits ah shoot okay 8 bit switch good call okay try that again let's see does this work how I think it does stores 245 outputs 245 stores 42 outputs 42 it's good holy shit <laughs> fuck yeah just needed the eight foot thing oh my god <laughs> I can't believe I got it actually I thought I was going to be boned, and then I'd be like, oh, I have no idea what to do, but I actually followed it through. Look at this beauty. The tiny box. <laughs> I need to sit here and gloat for myself, because I... <laughs> oh, I can't believe this. Now I'll do it manually on a PCB? No, I'm good. So, what I'm wondering is how many fewer components can I use? Because I feel like this whole eight switches on the left side could be better. Thank God for coloring. I'm glad you guys convinced me to color it. <laughs> it's a mini motorways. Um, I could use the normal switch if I had checked it before the memory. What do you mean? I don't need the right side switches at all. Well, I tried doing it without the right side switches. But maybe it was a little bit different. If it works, it works. <laughs> all right, what is, uh, what's this thing here? Counting. It's so fundamental, even insects do it. From counting, species can evolve to compare and do with arithmetic. And before you know it, you have apes building computers. Make a device that counts increments once per tick. Okay, so increases by one every tick. There should be an option for overwriting the counter with a given value. The bit input should toggle between counting and overwriting with the value of the byte. Okay. So I'm, okay, this is the toggle. If it's 
green, is it counting or overriding? I don't know, actually. I think if the bit is off, I count. If the bit is on, then it's overridden. I think that's the plan. Okay, green is override. Well, okay, so I I think I preemptively want to switch. If this is on, I would over... I need the 8-bit switch. 8-bit switch. Right, if it's, if it's on, it override. The counting will just be kind of different. Um, and I can do like 8-bit adding, I guess. I feel like there's a couple ways I could do this. Um, I feel like there's a couple ways. <laughs> I have a really weird idea for how I'm going to do it. Uh, I don't know if it's a good idea. And I need my um, delay line. Yeah, I, I saw that. Here's the delay. So, oh shoot, I had it. Carry in, input one, input two. <laughs> okay, maybe I actually don't like having this right now. Let me at least get the basic counter going. Issue is, oh, 8-bit memory. Is that probably better for counting? It's probably better for counting. Load, save, save value. Well, actually, I guess then, couldn't I take the output and then add one? Just <laughs> upside down adder. Add one. I mean, that probably works. So then this could go all the way back into here. Yep, zero becomes one, and then you add one, and then you add one, then you add one. But... But... What I could do... Don't let me... Don't, don't do this yet. Not yet, not yet. I need a second switch. I need a second switch for the other case. And this will be... If... This bad boy is not on. Then you'll take this and you'll output it here. Otherwise, you'll output this. So only one of these will be on at any given time. Do I even need this 8-bit memory then? Two switches is the same as a mux? You're right, it is. Oh... That, that's probably even better then. Okay, hold on. I'm actually going to do this from scratch then because I, I see the mucks now. I think there's... Yeah, there's a, there's a better way. Well, okay. I'll leave, I'll leave some of the adding. I'll leave some of it. So... I should be using the mucks, yeah? It takes the input. If it's off... It does the addition. If it's on, it does this thing. So then I would want a delay. But I only have a one bit delay. Okay, I guess I could do it via here. Yeah, unless if I wanna do, <laughs> unless I wanna split it up into eight bits. Yeah. Ah, oh, damn it. So I did have this. Well, okay, this is a delay though. If this is a delay, then I could just wire these up. Load, save. Well, so it should always be saving. Um, have on, it should always be saving. It shouldn't always be loading too. I think it should always be loading. Does this work? So add one, one, 
32. All right with 33. Oh, yeah, it just works. Nice. <laughs> Easy. Easy. All the adding. Cool. Is an Ouroboros. Yeah, that's one way to think about it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so... The input that goes into the register. The register is a delay, and the input is one of two things. It's either from the bottom, the previous output with one added to it, or the input, and that depends on this switch. Cool. So now we're into the next land. CPU architecture. Terrifying. Oh, they give me a start with something. I can... Oh, so this is what I made before with the colors and everything. Now I need more instructions. Addition and submission. So, that's four and five. Ah. Hmm. So, I guess I would have a separate mux... Can I, can I move this? Oh, you dick. I can't move this. At least they give me more space. Um, here's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to take all of this and punch it back a bit. And same with this. Punch it back. And I punch it back more. Yeah, I can take these. Punch it back once. I got a little bit more space. I got a bit more space. So now, I got another mux. Um, it would look like this. Yeah, so this mux would be the fours place. If it's zero, then I would just take the output from before. But if it's one, then I would have two new functions, addition and subtraction. And I think I need another mux for this in this column. Because it is a... It's the ones place that makes a difference here. So addition would be zero, and uh, subtraction, of course, would be four. So I have 8-bit addition right here, thankfully. Hopefully it doesn't carry ever. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't carry, because if it does, I'm kind of screwed. So I would take this, okay, actually, no, no, let's do, um, let's do darker blue, add, add, it doesn't carry, good, I'm just gonna take this and wire it up right, no, 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 here, so then I need subtraction, do I actually have, I don't actually have subtraction, but, I guess that's what I'm meant to do. So a subtraction is just adding a negative, right? I have negation actually, so I do have subtraction. Um, add, and of course, negate. So I would just add the positive of one and the negative of another, and it should work. Yeah, it's a little spaghetti, but it'll work. Spaghetti is meant to be eaten, not looked at. And this is a delicious arithmetic engine. Next up, I got registers. My master project. I don't need another adder. Um, I don't know if that's true, actually. Oh, yeah, I, well, if you don't have another adder, then you would need another of something else. Hey, Liam, new member, welcome. Love the channel, hope you're doing well. I am doing well, thank you. I am doing as well as I can when it comes to, it comes to this game, it's hard. 
Time to create your master project. Implementing the Overture computer architecture, this will be an actual Turing complete machine, roll credits, a true comp computer in every way. Red components are there. <laughs> Lock the components in place since I always make a mess and don't leave enough space. The mess I make from now on is saved between levels so I don't get to start fresh each level. Oh, interesting. In this level, I need to create a circuit which can copy from a source to a destination. Instruction byte in this level determines the source and the destination. Bits 1, 2, and 3 give the destination. Bits 4, 5, and 6 give the source. Okay. Source and destination can be one of six registers. Oh. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> okay. We'll land them register 0 to 5, respectively. Oh, so this is 0 to 5. Some of them are one, would be 1 to 6. Some of them would be 0 to 5. But okay. And then here's the bit patterns. Yeah, it looks like binary to me. 0 to 5 in binary. That makes sense. Uh, there was more, and I should have scrolled down. And notice the scroll wheel. Oh, so there's also input and unused. I don't know if unused is actually supposed to mean anything, but input is interesting. Destination, output. To get a more intuitive understanding of the requirements, click this turn. Okay. So. So what are the what are these things here? This is the instruction. Register zero, register zero. And this is the input. And then this is the output. Disable slash enable. Wait, what is it disabling or enabling? In the input. Hmm. Yeah, wait, what? Disabling or inputting the inputs or the outputs? Like, does it just want me to do this? I guess. I mean, I, I okay. I, I, I might be overthinking it. No. Okay. Then the only other thing it could possibly be would be switch. That looks like that. Is that what it wants for me? Is a built-in switch? Well, so I thought, hmm, hold on. I thought I was taking this, and let me let me look at this again. Let me make sure I actually get this part right. So the source and the destination. So this would be an eight bit. Okay, 8-bit where realistically the first 6 bits are being used. Copy from a source to a destination. So then... Input... It would come from the input, potentially. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. I don't understand this. 
Joshua with the tenor. Thank you. Been watching since the balloons era, and your videos are just absolutely amazing. I appreciate all the amazing work you do. Love from the Milwaukee School of Engineering. I almost went there, actually. Almost did. But the only reason I didn't, I guess, because I wanted to go somewhere that was a little bit further away from home. Great school, though, uh, from what I was able to figure out. Okay, so. And these are the damn registers. So which one it chooses is going to have to be based on the inputs. Do I have the 3-bit decoder? I do have the 3-bit decoder. That's very helpful. That is very helpful. So what I'm going to do then is this, right? First, I got to split this into 8 bytes. Seems pretty important. So now, the 3-bit decoder can actually be useful here, where I can uh, go... Oh boy, this is going to be hard with space. I should have placed two of them. Eh, no matter. One of them could just be like here. So, here's what I'm thinking, right? One of them will be the input decoder. And then one of them will be the output decoder. And why it's here, I'm not sure right now. That may change in the future. What's this top thing? This is the disable. Is that what this is? Because I still don't understand this. People saying it's a contained input, but that doesn't really make any sense to me. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I should just ignore them. That's true. It'll come back to me eventually. So. The top one, I'll have be the input. Um, I don't like that it's gray, but I think I'll just put up with the gray for now. And this is a load register. And let me double check that the inputs are what I think they are. So it's register zero is the top one. Okay. So, I guess I could... Oh, damn you. I guess I could take it, move it. I don't know. Seems like it's just going to be spaghetti no matter what. Spaghetti and never forgetty. Because if I'm loading, right, I would want the zeroth to go to here. And then the first to go to here. But ugh, it looks so bad. How do I make this less spaghetti? Hmm. And I can't move these. Maybe, yeah, maybe I could rotate it. True, true. Um, take it, rotate. Ahem. Rotate it. I mean, it's not that much better. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's not. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. I'll put it like here. Boop and boop. Cool diagonal stuff. You first one wired. And then I just wire the first six. Ah, oh, shoot. Whoops. Pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> uh, but then I need the seventh one, which is the input. So. So 
So this? This is an input? Not, oh, so, okay. So this is literally an input, not an output. It's not saying anything. It's waiting to receive something. That is weird. Okay. Um, this isn't trying to say anything. It's waiting for something to be told to it. Yeah. So uh, we'll have one unused, which is fine, which is fine. So then the value. Well, the value, you know, I'll, I'll mark that in a different color. Let's go with the value being blue. I want this to come all the way maybe here. And then reach it up and connect to the register. Um, It's not always going to be that value. But here's the thing. Actually, let me think about this a little bit more real quick. Let me think about it. Is this how I want to do this? I just want to say this is a cleaner way to do it. Because I also have to be sure that sometimes I have it a little backwards, right? Well, not backwards. I just also need the output from each of these registers to come into play. Load, save. Uh, actually, where is the save input? Fuck. Uh-oh. Um... Always save. All right, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to where I was then. I'll go back to where I was. We're chilling. So next, as the value being saved in whichever one uh, this decoder decides to load it in. And then save is this decoder, yeah? Uh, I maybe could make this a little neater. Hmm, this look okay? I think so. Let's go with some gray. And then this would, yep, yeah, yep, this would be the load. And yeah, from zero to zero is how it begins, which is what's being said right now. So then the last, the last one goes all the way to the output, doesn't it? I'll bring that around like this, there. So now we're chilling. <laughs> Can you smell what Aliens Rock is cooking? Can you smell? What the aliens rock is cooking. Yeah, there's plenty of steam coming from my ears. It's, uh, so next up, next up, now I gotta actually just take the output. And I'll go with, like, purple for it. Um. So. Couple things here. So it can go to the output output, but also can go into another register, which is the big thing. This also has to loop back in. Um, right? I think it was just... No, sure. No, I can't get away with that. What do you mean I can connect these two lines? Oh, I guess I see why. Yeah, the input could go directly to the output. It's just whether or not it chooses to. So this is this is okay? No, it's not. So first, copy input to output. 63 goes to 63. 
Next. 27 should be in register zero. Where the hell is 27? Where's the 20? Here's the 27. Would this work? Okay, ignore the... Ah, damn it. My inputs and outputs are backwards. I don't like thinking about it this way. Um, did I make save and load? Oh shoot, did I? It doesn't say in here which is save and which is load. It'll be obvious once I do 27. Hold on, let me see. So there's 63. Register zero. Hmm. So input. Oh. Oh. Um. Maybe that's not too bad. I just need to take this line and link it up to here. Maybe it's this easy. Because then this could go to the output. Maybe that's it. Please have that be it. No. Short circuit. Oh, do I have to swap the rest of these fuckers too? No, surely not. Ugh. Ugh. Um, give me a second. So let's go back to how this was. So only swap the top. So I could swap the inputs probably more easily. It's only a moderately annoying. I think I'll just get rid of these lines. And then move. And then fuck. Select. Move it. Oh my gosh. Come on. Grab all of it. Oh! Grab the decoder too, you dick! No, 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 no. Ugh. This is annoying. Alright, uh, you get the hell out of the way just for now. This may go up. Why does it keep doing this? Ah! Please! Grab the... Oh my god. Why won't it grab the big decoder too? Thank you. Is that so hard? I didn't realize that was the hardest damn thing I've ever done before. I must have had this backwards, so then I take all this. There we go, move it down, maybe about here's fun. Eh, here. Or maybe I'll just like... I guess I'm gonna have some spaghetti on the top. Unavoidable. Thankfully it doesn't look that bad. Okay, let's try this again. So, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Not too spaghetti. Not too spaghettified, but it does work. Hopefully, it's easy to build on. <laughs> Hopefully.
Oh boy. Colorite, it is colored. It's colored gray. Wish this game didn't make diagonal connections by default. I agree. Next up, I need this, the component factory. The circuits I create in here will be usable as, compo in, as components in architectures. The circuits you create defines the behavior of the components and the layout defines its shape. Cool. I can use schematics here. This level is a tool and not a challenge. Okay, so this is like where I would make this smaller, yeah? So how about I take all this, move it down a bit? It's shrunk. There's overlap. Okay, there we go. That's funny I shrunk the level. I'm gonna take this, move it up a little. Um no. Take these, move it over a touch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take this, move it in a bit. Okay, looking good. Well, now I actually might want a diagonal wire. Less space. Yeah. Bring it all in. <laughs> Just, you know... Make the corner a little bit more bendy. Nice and diagonal. Wires don't count. Oh. Well, in that case, I'm going back to this. Okay. Uh, hopefully that automatically saves. Component preview. Oh, I can see the size here. Interesting. Okay, see if maybe I could get rid of this bottom little pip. Possibly. Whoop. So, in order to do that, I need to, like, take this, move it up a bit. Hey, I've made it smaller. Perfect. That's what I wanted to see. It's all cramped in there. So, what's this? The instruction decoder. Hmm. The circuit I built in the registers level can copy values between registers, while the arithmetic engine can do different operations on two inputs, but you need to be able to do both in the same circuit. Do this build a decoder, which will decide which mode our computer is in based on the two bits we haven't used yet. Distinguish between the instructions of four different kinds. The two highest bits will be used to determine which mode we're in. Immediate calculate copy condition. And then the rest don't matter. Determine the mode from the input and then send green to the correct output. So instruction decoder. Immediate calculation. So it's the highest two bits. I mean, okay. I guess that means I should be taking like the, the byte splitter and then only focusing on the highest two bits. In fact, it, it seems like it's a one-bit decoder. I could do three-bit decoder for this, right? So, like, take these two. If I want immediate... Can I not do the inputs? Why, why doesn't it let me test? Okay, whatever. Green to this. I'm going to assume calculation is here. Um, hold on. So this... Okay, yeah, that's the first one. This is the second one. This is the third one. And then, well, the fourth one will go here. Source, just trust me. These are outputs. Oh! Wait, what? I don't know what you guys complain about. This is what the game wanted. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, so what the game wanted. <laughs> um, we're chilling. I mean, I know what everything is. Um, uh, for some reason, you're making me doubt that I was solving the puzzle. I broke it? What do you mean? Okay, now I'm really confused. What what are you talking about? I broke it by I think we're chilling. I think we're chilling. Ah, shoot. Time to merge in the arithmetic engine. Wait, you talking about like the previous level, like two levels ago? This got broke. I fixed it. Um, I'll double check though. I think it's fair to double check. I mean, it's possible this is broken because there's so much spaghetti here, but I think it works. We can uh, test. Okay, nothing's happening actually. It's kind of strange. Actually, no, there's no test happening. Is there not? I don't think there's supposed to be a test. I connected a knot to an input. Kind of. I mean, I see this bad boy. Oh, interesting. Um... Hold on. Hold on. Let's see, does this fix the problem? Wait. Shoot, what was input two? Yeah, this doesn't have a connect. What was this connected to? Shoot. Oh. Okay, I now see it. This needs a connection. Where did I connect it in the first place? Maybe here? Uh, it doesn't let me test. It's one of two connections. Is it either here or here? I don't know. Um, okay, so this is supposed to be what? I'm going to guess it's the top one, but... What happens if I try it on the bottom one? I mean, exactly the same thing. It's the same wire. Oh my god, it is. Oh, it's the same wire. Okay. Nice. Damn shifting things. That was way back. That was a really good catch, actually. Because, yeah, there's so much... Okay, the, the pain's the spaghetti. You miss things that... Uh, oof. Could bite you in the ass. Now I can solve this puzzle. Why do I think they're different? Oh, because it's spaghetti and I can't read it. <laughs> that's, that's why. So... Time to merge in the arithmetic engine circuit. Um, oh god. I'm gonna find out it's still broken, aren't I? Well, you know what? If I do, then I do. Then I'll have to go back and fix it. It's not a big deal. 
Found the merge in the arithmetic engine circuit you made previously with the register circuit. The calculation circuit was saved in the component factory and can now be added as a component. If you've got which pin does what, check the circuit in the component factory. So here are the four modes. Uh, I should decide if we copy between registers or do calculations. And here, I only have to worry about copy and calculate mode. Interesting. Interesting. An extra pin has been added to the registers. This pin always emits the value of the register regardless if a load is selected or not. Um, so now, the decoder. This thing I made. Cool. Based on what inputs though, like, where do I get the input for this? It's like, okay, I have one of four modes I could do. Does it come from... Oh, surely not, right? From here? Would it be the top two bits? Ah, these two bits. Oh, no. So I would take this, bring it over here. Interesting. Oh, okay. It also takes in something, an 8-bit thing. So I would need to wire 64. Eh, let's do gray. Sixty-four goes to sixty-four. One twenty-eight to one twenty-eight, and the rest are just off. The rest are just off, yeah. So then it goes to the decoder. So now it'll do one of the four instructions. So now it wants me to do only the middle two, only calculate and copy. Oh, I could just take the initial inputs? Really? Okay, so it will ignore the rest. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Like, I could just do that. I like my way better. Uh, but... Calculate and... Damn it, let me make sure I get this right. Calculate and copy. So, calculate... What is the exact meaning of calculate here? When in calculate mode, take register 1 and register 2 as inputs and save the result in register 3? Always those registers? Surely not, right? What a oddly specific ask. Like, always those? I guess I kind of want to know why. <laughs> All right, so ALU. Um, so no, I got this. The instruction. The instruction is to do math, I guess. To to add that, so. Okay, I need to go back to my ALU to figure out what input gives me addition. That's four. Right? Yeah, four is addition. You can also double click on the ALU. No, I, I needed to know four goes in the top one. Do I have to handcraft for? The input is also the instruction? 
the fuck? You're saying this fucking asshole is also the instruction? Excuse me? Hmm. Well, I, I gotta figure out where I want this because I'm taking the inputs from the first two registers, which, by the way, is always output. Oh, oh I didn't even notice the second output. Well, this is pretty easy then. Um, it's just I, I gotta figure out where I want this. Where do I want it? Nah, I guess it doesn't really matter. Well, no, it should matter. Where the hell do I want to place this thing? Um, I'm going to say right here for now. Because then I'll just do this funny little gray line. Go whoop, all the way here. And then I'll take... Let's go pink for this one. Register one. And register two. Kind of looks like ass. Smells like ass, too. So then, this... Ah, shoot. That's zero and one. Yeah, I knew that'd bite me eventually. Okay, bring it down. Fair enough. Here we are. One and two. So then, I want like an 8-bit switch, yeah? That only goes when the, hopefully, this one is calculation is active. And then, well, it's got to go to register three, which is here. Um, so I have to make sure that, oh, no, no, oh, no. I feel like I should position this differently. Oh, no. Like, I want to just kind of go, whoop, or like, you know, right back on the line. I might need another switch. Um, actually, I think my issue is I don't really fully understand the instructions. It Is this ever allowed? Or are there only like going to be specific inputs? Or is it like an either or where you either have these or you have that? Stream down? Hmm. Stream almost died. We back now? Okay, never mind. I'm going to hook this up to here and we'll see what's wrong. Okay, please help me short circuits. Okay, lovely. Okay. Okay, if I calculate on, then... What the? Oh, then one of these happens? Liam with the five. Gonna lurk for now, have fun lurking. Um... Okay, this is... What the hell? So I could do a ton of different instructions, although the ALU... Thankfully handles that. 
Disable the decoders when calculating. How do you disable? Oh, oh. You disable them quite easily, actually. Uh, you, um, with a not gate. Yeah, with a not gate. Kind of like this. Oop. And... Ah, oh, the, the space is awkward here. Um, I guess here. It's not amazing, but it's fine. Actually, I guess I can take... Get rid of the knock gate. Just take the same thing and put it right up and here. It's already a disable switch. Oh, the thing itself is a disable. Okay, cool. All right. It is a disable switch. I need to get to know my three bits better. Anyway, now that it's a disable switch, now I'm pretty sure I can just take the pink and just kind of pop it in right there. So let's, let's see. No short circuit. Register three should have value 255. Where is it going? Right now it's going nowhere. It's not going into register three. So register three needs the direct connection. Probably, I guess, I guess I just am meant to do this instead. Hmm. I also need to save in the register. Yes. Um, save. So this line no good I guess what I could do is one of two things uh, I don't like this positioning where we go back to gray the or gate will trigger if you know it works normally or if um... oh I really don't like this right now this thing comes down to here I mean this this could work now it just saves. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I got that down. I don't have the other one yet. Let's see when it stops. Wait, why isn't it stopped? Wait, I thought I was supposed to do more than calculations. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to do a second thing. A fatty with the 10. This is basically the bare bones of a processor already. Soon we'll be working with clocks. Quite neat. Yeah, I guess this is quite a bit. I, I thought I was supposed to do a second thing, though. Does this still work if it connects here? It should, right? Why does the other one work? Let me take a look. It is copy. What is copy supposed to do? So if I go to instructions, I have copy on, copy, oh, from register to register. Oh, oh, well, that's what this does by default. That's what this does by default. Um, that sounds concerning moving forward, but I think I'll just let it be. Now we're here. Oh, that's a lot of numbers. <laughs> Hey, the instruction input component has been removed. It has been replaced by a program component. Every tick, use the counter to load the next instruction from the program's memory. Must use the counter component I unlocked earlier for this level. Counter component. Me this? So here's all the instructions. It will just output the instruction, yeah? But I need to make it go to the next instruction? Is that what it's telling me? Yeah, is it telling me... It, does the input... I guess I can collect this. The address. Hmm, the address. So, okay, I have a counter here. So then it would start with address zero.
And then it's always going to increment and never overwrite. So I can just take this, move it here, have it always increment. Is that all? Is that nothing else? Next tick, it's not incrementing. Um, probably needs an input. Oh, wait, no, no. I have it. It should be off specifically. Well, actually, does that mean I can just let it ride here? It does. Okay, nice. <laughs> yeah, I had that backwards. You know, whenever it's, uh, you have to do this little, it always makes me nervous. I'm like, surely it's never this simple. Surely there's more to it. But thankfully, it was just, it, it is very generous in how it incrementally teaches you. Okay, we need to directly move numbers from our program into registers. For this, we use immediate mode. When the two highest bits are both red. When in immediate mode, the whole byte is interpreted as a number that we save into register zero. We can save any value from zero to 63. The whole byte, like from the program? Must be. So save it, um, no, it's from zero to 63. Oh, well, yeah, of course, because the top two are zero. Okay, so I would save a number into register zero in immediate mode, which is this one. Okay. So I can do, okay, I can, I can, I can figure this one out. This one does not seem too bad. Um, it's going to involve an 8-bit switch. I think I'm going to have it be up here for now, because we'll go that, and then, of course, I'll take the input, yeah? So only input this into register zero if it's on. Now, this also... Um, this also needs to disable the top bits, or the, the decoders. So that's where that gets tricky. Um, I'm going to ignore that part for now. I'll do that last, because this value... I think I'll have it be pink again. That's going to get just kind of connect to all of this. No. And then register zero should load or should save in the same way that uh, register three did. Do we have an or? This or the... No, this is looking spaghetti. Well... Mamma mia. So now I just need to have it disable the decoders. And let me check. It is going into register zero, right? Yeah, it is. Doing this is a fairly common six-month project in college courses for the computer and software engineering. Damn, gaming is special then. Because I only have like, like five-ish hours on this game. A bit less, actually. Like, closer to four. And it's a six-month course. So I still got a bit to go. And frankly, I feel like I don't have this committed to memory, but it is very cool. Um, yeah, but now I need to, I need to disable the decoders up here. So I don't have two values at the same time. Now, uh, I mean, I, uh, it's fine. I can just delete these. I can do another OR gate up here. Um, we'll do a two-way OR gate. Flip it a little. Do this. Have this come to one. This come to the other. This go to both. It kind of sucks, but it's how it is. Anyway, this should work. Fuck. Input not enabled copy hmm 
Actually, what? Immediate 63 to register 0. That works. Copy this to register 1. Um, I see. I see. Okay, let me think about this for a sec. I think this needs to just be enabled. Um, now copy. Copy is what can get this going, actually. I think that's the dream, right? Copy can enable the decoders. So I could do copy with a not. And that would enable these. And it would otherwise be off, which I think is ideal. Let's go. Oh, that's how it works. Okay, so I should have done something in the previous level. I should have added this specific knot. Or two levels ago. Whatever. Cool. So then oh, I got this here. What is this? This level has a value input and three condition bit input. The three bits select the condition as shown below. Check the value against the selected condition and output green. If it is satisfied, read otherwise. I need to reverse that. Um, or maybe this will help. Okay, so there's a value, and then it does a variety of checks, whether it equals zero, or if it's less than zero, or greater than, or less than zero. And this determines the outputs. I, I see. It's a very tiny level. Very teeny tiny level. Interesting. Interesting. Hold on. So this is three bits. So I could use a three bit decoder. Potentially. Um, let me decide if that's the plan. And what are all the possibilities again? So there's one that's never, there's one that's always, and then it just checks how it relates to zero. Interesting. No, I... Okay. Interesting. Hold on. So, the input is going to be a signed integer, yeah? Wait, what? No, it's not. Wait. Are there even negatives? Can I not get a negative number input? So, no, sh surely, sh surely, I'm gonna want to. How do what? Where's my negative input? It is. It just doesn't show. Ah, that makes more sense. <laughs> um. Oh, here we go. No, no, it's. Still the same. Uh huh. Eh. What? Oh, oh yeah, negative one. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I, I have to manually type it. I, yeah. Pressing this doesn't work. You have to manually type it. Yeah, it's, it's just a display error. Anyway. Oh, I, I didn't look at the circle. Wait, what the hell is with this input? Why? There we go. Why is this the negative bit? Why is this the eighth one? I don't know. You're weird. No matter. Um, what? How do I want to begin with this? <laughs> hmm. 
never... So I think I should be trying to find a way to almost shortcut, right? First is just never. Um... And then... No right in the first bit. And first... Ah. I feel like I could do this the brutish way. But there's probably a way to simplify it. I also only have 1 bit and 8 bit operators. So it's kind of like a past level. But harder. Because I mean the brutish way would work, right? So you split into these and then you do a good old 3 bit decoder. Put that like here. Uh, you know what? I'll take this movie here. Whoop, and whoop, and whoop. Three bit decoder. So. I can only have one of these at a time for the output. So this, I mean, if the first one is never. So that's going to need to just be a not. Um, put it like here, I guess. I, can, I could just jam that in there. That's fine. Next input is value equals zero. Oh, well, okay. No, that's, that's wrong. Um. <laughs> Actually, I don't like this either. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, switch, I guess. Oh. <laughs> I guess I could just, yeah, do nothing. That's true. I could, I could just chill since it's never on. I don't need to input an off into there. Okay, so for the second one is, is it equal to zero? Let's see. Um, hmm. Interesting. So this is where the switch would come in. I'm trying to figure out if I can do it without splitting up this. But actually, maybe that's not a big deal. Like, I guess I could do it the brutish way. I'm going to move this up too. No, I can't move it. I can move the output. You weirdo. Yeah, why can't I move the output and not the input? Like, I guess for a second, I was just thinking, do a bunch of ores. Nah, uh, this looks like such ass. It looks like ass. Um, There's got to be a better way instead of just a ton of ores. I mean, I can bitwise or here, but that, that doesn't make, that doesn't work. No better way than a bunch of ores. Damn it. Okay. I hate it, but it's specifically four ores. Where would I place this?
Hmm. Yeah, maybe there is a better way. I, I, I feel like there has to be. You can't do components in this level. Um, it's just the basic logics. 8-bit OR is for um, ORing two different numbers together, which um, outputs an 8-bit number. I want a 1-bit signal to be output. Maybe I'm better off with a different one. How about if value is less than zero? That one's easy. If value is less than zero, um, that, one, that one's super easy, right? You just check this bit. That's it. So, like, I, I could do a switch here. Way down here. And go, like, um, this should be rotated. <laughs> That's probably a start, I think. Yeah, this would just kind of come down, go into the switch. All right, easy. I can just link that up there. And also... It does include zero, so I am missing two. Ah, shoot. That's why I need zero. Damn it. You know what? Fine. Give me a damn crap ton of ores. Um, we're going to do it here. They look like rocket ships going to the ore moon. And yes, it is going to be spaghetti here. Thank you for asking. Okay, three ores. I guess it actually was three. <laughs> so. Uh, so if this is green, it's not equal to zero. So actually, I could do the second one. If the value is equal to zero, I would take this. I could do a not gate. Here, sure. And then do a switch. Like that. Bam. Bam. Whoop-de-doo. The bottom input, I don't think should be connected to the ores, right? Maybe I do need to connect it? No, I do need to connect it. Yeah, yeah. All right. The spaghetti actually works in my favor because it's um, overlapping nicely. Okay, so now... If it equals zero, I get a big yes. I also then need an and down here. Damn it. Here. This and goes to the third one. Let's go, let's actually go pink for this. I can connect it here. 
I'll uh, turn this wire into pink for color coding. Go pink for color coding. Yeah, that's all pink. And you know what? We can, we can do a different color for this here. Oh. Two down. Okay. And then... Here, the value greater than or less than zero. And actually... What, what did I just say? If the value is less than or equal to zero. Uh, where the pink wire is connecting, this is um, connecting to it not being zero because I need this not gate otherwise to go to the is it equal to zero one. So... It's just checking that it's negative and not equal to zero. Because otherwise... I actually didn't need this. Wait, didn't I? Fuck. Maybe this might actually might not be necessary. Okay. That's... All right. Let me walk this through. Okay. So, this one is only on... If the value is less than zero. If this is positive, then it is less than zero. In all circumstances. In all circumstances. So then my next one is it if it's less than... Or equal to zero. So then what I could do is first the switch and an or gate. So I could do light blue here, a switch here, which would send it to the goal. I can then also take, if it's negative or zero, like that. That just works. Uh, next up, I think, is always on. That one's easy. You can just connect this directly. Easy peasy. Next is, if the value is not equal to zero. Well, that one I actually already have as well. I can just take the connection from here and send that in. Only through a switch. I forgot about the switch. Put that up here. Do a little connection here. Switch. And then bam. Perfect. Then we got value is greater than or equal to zero. Which is just the opposite of this line. I also connected the wrong to yellow. It was this here. Perfect. So then, all right, it's starting to get messy. At least I've color coded this stuff. You do the orange line here. And it's if it's greater than or equal to zero. So that would be the opposite of whether it's negative. So all I need is one not. And I can connect it to down here. Then connect this here. And then the last. But 
Really? Wait, how? What is a switch? It's because of the always on. I don't, I don't think a switch is needed for it though. Yeah, I don't think a switch is needed for that. Because here's how I would do the switch for it. I would do it like this, which is the same thing. But uh, I don't know, maybe um, maybe this is fine. That's fine. And then this, okay, whatever. Um, I don't see how that's different. Oh, it counts as a zero as opposed to no input. Right, okay, that's the kicker. So then the last one, if the value is greater than zero, which is the opposite of it being less than or equal to zero, which is four. Yeah, switch means no input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do, I'll do a dark orange for this. Put that here, connect that. And then I need a not gate from here. There we go. That should work. Damn it. Value. What? Value equals zero. Oh, I think I messed up this wire. I see. Right now. There we go. Yay. <laughs> that is beautifully designed gorgeous Ugh. well next up is a working computer this is what i've been building towards the big boy puzzle here let's see until this point all possible programs have been confined to running in order running in order byte by byte before only code could influence memory now memory must influence code with the addition of conditional logic, our computer can run any algorithm and calculate any cal anything calculable. So, when the two largest bits are on, the last thing in the decoder, I'm in condition mode. In condition mode, the value in register three is compared against the conditions defined by the lowest three bits in this instruction. Okay. I want to turn off negative numbers. Yeah, it looks better that way. Good call. All right. So then there's all these instructions. Oh, so. Oh. Okay. So if the largest two bits are that, then the lowest three bits would become the thing I just made. Interesting. I would compare register three. If the condition is true, we overwrite the counter. What's the counter? Uh, to the value in register zero. Oh, the counter way over here. This counter. Oh, that can counter. Yeah, this actually makes a lot of sense. This makes a lot of sense. Um, it's just doing it without spaghetti. It's going to be tough. Hmm, give me a second to think then. Because, yeah, it'd be the three lowest bits. I mean, I could just take those. Yeah, I could take those. What am I worried about? What am I worried about? The three lowest bits would then go into the condition. I'll just plop that down here.
Um, man, this thing looks weird. So, give me a second. Let me let me take a look at something real quick. So why do I feel like oh, no no no? I could just take this entire ass thing, and put it in the condition. That doesn't seem right. No, it doesn't seem right. Um, okay, maybe I do need to reread it. Okay. Um, next up is the actual input and. Specifically, it wants me to get from input for register 3. The register 3 is 0. Oh, shit, this, fuck. Does it start at 0 or it starts at 0, I think. So this would be register 3. So then the always outputs. I'll just, I'll let it be spaghetti. The spaghetti all the way up here. So then... The result it has single yes yeah, a single bit output so then and I need to check this again so then if that's true we overwrite the counter to the value in register zero so here's the counter uh, if it's true, I would overwrite it to the value in register 0. Nice! Well, that's probably it. Fuck. Next tick, the counter will be 0. It should be 1. Uh-oh. Damn near. Alright. I might need, um, I might need a switch. So we're going to go to switch, uh, eight, uh, eight bit switch, eight bit switch. Um, give me a second. Put this here, put this here. I'm going to keep it green. Because Wait, where'd it go? This will be green, and then this will also be green. That's the ticket. That's the damn ticket. That's a computer. That's a whole ass computer. Yeah. You know, basic one, but a computer. <laughs> The computer needs instructions, which thankfully I haven't had to do yet, but for what it's worth, I did a built a computer that takes instructions. I think next time I play this game, I think it's about figuring out the instructions, because there's programming section and then more architecture and then harder stuff up there. But that's a wonderful spot to end it. It's a very basic computer. And a very hard game. But I think I'll be studying this, so uh, when I come back next time, I could maybe pick up with programming, make sure I understand it fully sort of thing. Because, uh, yeah, that's, that's a lot to take in. That's a brain blast of info. But I think I'm going to call it there, so thank you all for coming into today's stream. It was fun. I'll see you guys all in tomorrow's video. It'll be a, it won't be a stream, so bye, guys, and have a nice day.